Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and today I wanted to talk a little bit about energy clearing. This will also go into clearing karma from past lives. So stay tuned for that. When we are thinking about clearing our energy, for some people this is a very foreign concept or even if you are a spiritual practitioner, you might get so wound up in taking care of everybody else that you forget to stop and take care of you and figure out what it is that you need and what might be holding you up. What is, you know, taking away your confidence or what's making you feel drained? I know that I will work. I like, I like working, <laughs> right? So I'll work and work and work. And then I just feel like, oh my gosh, why do I feel like I need to take a nap all the time? Or why don't I feel inspired? That's usually a good clue that you need to do a clearing. Now, we aren't going to be going into a meditation here to do a clearing. There are tons of resources all over YouTube. Just pick one. I also have a clearing meditation over at Gumroad. It is gumroad.com slash angel souls, but you can choose anything that you want. I am in this video just going to go through um, some techniques that you might want to set your intention for as you choose one of those meditations and you go through it, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's discuss, you have some connection with somebody. You can feel that they are just pulling on you. They just pop into your mind. You haven't thought about them in years and there they are. Or you have some pattern that you can't really seem to get past. This is a good time to go into meditation. You choose your meditation and set the intention for clarity and understanding and clearing. Now, Archangel Michael is usually the Archangel that everyone thinks of when we do a clearing. And Archangel Michael is associated with cord cutting. Now, people have come to me and complained, cord cutting doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Well, the reason why they perceive it as not working, again, you don't have to do that as a technique. There are many, many others. But what ends up happening is that they're cleaning the surface, but they're not getting to the root of why the cord was there in the first place. And so they come out of meditation. They immediately start thinking of that person again or that situation. And now there's a cord back. And then they're upset saying, I did the work. Why, why am I not getting the payoff? So cord cutting, uh, just, you know, going through the motions of severing those cords and you're not doing a deep clearing can be like, okay, well, you vacuum your rug, but you can't just do it once and be done. And it's not like you're deep cleaning your rug. You're just, you know, you're just vacuuming, right? So it's kind of like that. So if you want to, as you ask for the clarity, this is a big part of clearing. So ask this, you know, it could, you could visualize a light coming through you. Uh, what I like to do is just call Archangel Michael in and let it happen. Whatever vision starts to pop up in my head, fine. I don't care. <laughs> I'll leave it up to Archangel Michael. And it might be, um, you know, dissolving cords and then, you know, the roots of the cords also dissolving and falling away and light coming through. But again, if you go through whatever ends up coming up for you, if you don't get clarity on where that came from, you're going to go right back into it. Yes. So here is the biggest tip that I can offer you. You know why? Because I've done it and made this mistake so many times myself. <laughs> That's how I'm telling you, don't do as I do. Um, but there have been so many times where a message is coming through and I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And I'm like, nah, no, 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 no. And then you know, I, I, I'm all clear for a moment and then something happens or I have a thought and you, you get all clouded up again. So it is really a, a good opportunity if you're ready to look at whatever message comes up during a clearing about where your insecurities are, where are your fears, what are your belief systems? Are you, you know, were you raised that money is hard to come by and you're in scarcity mode and you're in lack mode and you know, and you're like, well, I've tried and it just never works. And you start falling down in your energy and you don't realize that your needs are always met as long as you're willing to receive. I, I can't even tell you guys, I have been through so many moments where I have felt stuck in my creativity, felt stuck in my direction, felt stuck when it came to love, being hung up on old situation uh, things and old um, 
you know, exes, old exes, <laughs> been hung up on exes, you know, situations, all of these things. And I haven't been able to feel at peace with it. And so I'm spinning my wheels in the present. So often I will, and it's hard. I, I know it's kind of hard to even admit like, okay, I'm ready to let that person go. Or, okay, I'm ready to let that situation go. Because a lot of us want vengeance. I, I Listen, hey, yo, we're all, <laughs> we're all human. We have a third dimensional ego consciousness. We really don't like it when someone gets one over on us. We don't like it when people scapegoat us or blame us for things. Or I was giving the example in another video about it. There was a situation I was in where there was collective gaslighting. And it was, it was a very hard situation to be in. And I look back on that and I'm like, you know what? I hope God saw that. And you know what? <laughs> I hope you got something coming to you, some karma, you know, or whatever. But <laughs> where, where does that really get us? You know, like, where does that get us? Well, for me, it, it just got me stuck in my present. And I was like leaking energy out and it was directionless. And it wasn't being put into anything worthwhile. And so... I'm not creating what I wanted to create. I'm not, you know, bringing forward what would be useful on my soul's path, okay? So that's also a good reason to get in here and do a clearing, but be ready to hear the messages as they come up, especially if you're working with Archangel Michael. In a clearing, you can also bring in, you can bring in any Archangel that you want, but you can bring in Archangel Metatron. Archangel Metatron is known for many things, you know, higher wisdom, sacred geometry, Akashic records, you name it. I always feel an association with Archangel Metatron in the sixth dimension. I, I always feel like it's kind of like mission control, but I only know as, as the information comes through me, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sure everybody has their take on it, but you can bring in Archangel Metatron and Metatron might have, again, it just depends on who you are and how you receive messages. Uh, get the ego out of the way. Get the ego out of the way as you do this. Don't go in there and go, I'm clairvoyant and I can only see visions. Like, no, you might feel it. You might be clairsentient. Uh, you might be clairaudient. You know, let it come through because there's going to be more and more communication through our cells, through our DNA, through our DNA activation. And the more, uh, the more we do our clearing, the clearer we are, the more open to those messages we can be as we evolve. There's going to be new information coming all the time. <laughs> right? So... Metatron can help you get at least a feeling. You may not see the Akashic records. That's okay. That's okay. You don't have to. Um, you know, the, the information can come to you. So whatever it is that you might feel in your gut is something that, that traps you. Mm -hmm. The trappings. You know, do you always find yourself alone? Do you always find yourself uh, self-sabotaging? Do you, do you always find yourself being defensive with people? You know, those are the kinds of things that will come up for you to look at. And if you ask for help, especially if you bring in Metatron or Michael, you will find in your day-to-day -day life after you come out of your clearing meditation that solutions just sort of pop up or ideas and inspiration starts flowing through you because why? You are clear. Now this does go into chakra clearing as well, clearing up and aligning your energetic centers. You can do that. You can clear your aura, but don't forget to reach out into your personal uh, magnetic field okay so what's hanging out there when you're ready you'll access that it's, it's like a far-off memory and it's the same kind of thing if you're you know if you've ever been through therapy I'm not a therapist but if you've ever been through therapy and you feel like there's a memory there it's like kind of vague you just can't quite get to it you can't access it and then the more you kind of clear away some of the other uh, cluttering thoughts and some of the emotions behind that things start opening up you know, and you might be able to access that. So it's the same kind of thing when you're doing, or it's similar in energy clearing, you're going to start seeing things like, you know what, maybe I've been manipulative. And why am I manipulative? Well, because I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid of not being loved. So I have to figure out what my spouse is doing all the time, right? I'm so afraid that my stability and security is going to be taken away. So I'm always trying to see what's on that assistance computer to see what the boss is doing. You know, all of these things that can take our energy away, right? So let's talk, let's go right, we'll go into some procedure <laughs> here in a little bit, but let's talk about past lives and karma from past lives. This is very interesting. I will just offer how I've gotten the information through. It's for your consideration. 
take it or leave it, but I'll just pass this through. So every time someone asks about past lives, I get a very clear message that that's not exactly how that works. Um, past lives and the future and all that, that is a very linear way of looking at time. And that is a human construct. That is how it functions through our third dimensional ego consciousness, seeing it as the past. Many moons ago, thousands of years ago, <laughs> being someone else. Um, and we do that with labels. We do that with boxing everything in. That's why we have archangels that have a set of duties and a name. They don't need the label. They don't need that. That's for us because they have to work with us. And this is how we function, right? They don't have a gender. They don't have a name. No, they don't. No, they don't. Okay. <laughs> I know whatever text you read, you know, all these sacred things. I got you. Okay. But don't forget all those sacred texts that we have access to as humans. They have to make sense to us. That's why it's the way it is. Okay. I think, I don't know. That's just how it's coming through me. Take it or leave it or whatever. <laughs> all right. So the way the information about other lifetime experiences or other timelines has come through me is that it's, it's more of a loop. You have this center and then all these storylines are looping around. And when they intersect, that's where you get a moment of deja vu or the, the stories could start to come close. Now, this is where we get into trouble with some of the soulmate connections or divine counterpart connections, because let's say you're on this timeline. This is where you consciously right here, you're on this timeline. Maybe you've got this other vibration, this other story that's sort of vibrating right here. And then just as time is flowing, um, kind of all existing all at the same time, but uh, the way we funnel it, it's flowing. Okay. So it starts to cut. It's not going to intersect, but it's coming really close. Well, maybe on this timeline, you and this soulmate, you've had this undeniable love. Okay. You have, you, that is what your purpose is in this expression. Okay. So you are meant to be together in this timeline over here, but over here, you're meant to reflect each other's pain and you're bouncing your trauma responses off of one another so that you can realize where your trauma is and move through it. You feel me? Does that make sense? So that's where I think where a lot of people are like, no, no, no. I just feel such a deep connection. I have to be with this person. I have to no, you're in with this person over here. This is teaching you about real love and how to love yourself. And that's all they're there for. And maybe you will never be with them in a partnership, but there's someone better coming along for you who fits in this timeline. Okay. So it's the same kind of thing. You know, if someone comes into this lifetime, maybe in, in one loop of a story, you're exploring writing. Okay. But on this timeline, you're supposed to be exploring being a lawyer, right? And you feel this urge to write because the timeline's getting kind of maybe close. Again, this is a very human way of me trying to funnel this and explain this, doing my best over here. So when we have all these loops and we have what we're calling this karma, yes, in certain traditions, it's called karma, uh, that what we're feeling, at least as it's coming through here, we're feeling, we're picking up on other timelines and other stories and feeding it in here to where you are right here, right? Where we are existing together. So in order to release that, or if there's uh, and actually if you do a karma release, this can help go, uh, I hear Metatron coming on here now and saying this could help <laughs> the whole swirl of experiences. But if you are not truly willing to let go, if you have this sub story going on that you somehow need to be punished, or that you're just so used to paying off debt of any kind that you just assume it's always going to be there. Even after you pay it off, you're like, but no, what am I going to do now if I'm not doing this? Does that make sense? We do it. We do it. Or you're so afraid that if you drop some bit of karma, that whoever you're having a love partnership with will fall away. Well, that's quite possible. That could definitely happen if you sum up that karma and you, you know, let it, let it go away. Or you, um, you know, we can go deeper into like soul contracts and, and all of that. Maybe that should be a separate video, but you know, you can go on in there and say, okay, I release you. I release you from this karmic connection. Again, you could do this with uh, Archangel Metatron, or you can get Archangel Jeremiah in here to help you with that as well. 
And as you go into your meditation, you might even fight this and say, no, 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 no. I actually see Jeremiah taking me to the past, taking me down a narrow path. It's because of your brain, okay? <laughs> it's not because that's necessarily, you know, the whole universe, I would imagine, isn't just how it is for the human perception. Does that make sense? So just bear that in mind. And, you know, as you're going into a karma release and you're coming in with that intention, when things start popping up, like, hey, are you ready to let this go? You know how often people are actually like, no, I don't want to release that person. Well, it depends. It depends on what your uh, contract with one another is. So if you still have more to learn from one another, all you're doing is clearing away some of the negativity. You can even approach it like that. I'm just going to release the negativity around this so that we can flow in a nicer way, learning our lessons in a more peaceful way. Um, they're saying right now, more often than not, people get into a karmic love cycle, not because they have to keep paying the karma, but because they won't let go. They just, it's what I said, you know, we get so used to being in a cycle of pain. We get so used to this idea that we have to, like, we're not worthy. And so we have to keep cycling around these lessons that we don't just stop and look at the lesson and go, oh, oh, okay. I can be done with that. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Let's not do that anymore. Right? So coming in with the right intention and an openness and an understanding is going to help immensely so that you don't have a repeat of things that you um, you don't want to have happen. Now on the flip side of this, some people are, if, I, I think it's a good sign if you're getting aggravated with a pattern that you have, because that does show that you're ready to release it. Uh, but sometimes people are like, oh, I feel a hard lesson coming. I feel some hard karma coming. <laughs> I want to release it right now so I don't have to go through that. Um, you're still going to learn your lesson one way or another. Now you can always choose to go in and, and, you know, adjust the frequency of how it comes to you. So you can have it come to you in a very high frequency, peaceful way. Or if you're just feeling like you're in a mood and you're like, whatever, I don't even believe this stuff anymore. It comes in, you know, it can come in kind of harshly. So if you are going to do this, go on into meditation, Archangel Metatron or Archangel Jeremiah and I always just say, you know, as long as you're setting your intention, whatever happens in the meditation, let it happen. And some people do like to have guided meditations, and there are plenty of those out there. Is it Diana Cooper? I think it's Diana Cooper who has um, a karma release meditation where, um, I think it's her, it's been a while since I've listened to this meditation, but um, where you imagine everybody coming into a room and you know you sever your contract with them it's something like that but anyway that's an option for you as well but really whatever is happening for you it's more about you feeling through your entire being the understanding of whatever that karma is and, and where it comes from what, what does it stem from and are you it's not about i don't want to go through this let me clear it away but are you ready to learn the lesson are you ready to let whatever it is that you need to understand sink in and then you can move on. So if you make that choice and you do a karma release meditation, this will help on all of your timelines. This is why whenever I'm doing a manifestation, um, you know, I just say in the highest good of everyone involved or, you know, all of that, but especially if you're doing karma release, it's also for the highest good of everyone involved across all directions of time and space. You know, so especially if you're doing releasing fear or releasing negativity. Now, fear is a big part of being human and it is the thing that teaches you. So you can maybe clear away some extraneous fear, the unnecessary fear, right? But there's still going to be fear moments for you. You're not going to escape that. That's a part of why you're here. Yes. But if you feel like, you know, you, you have this extraneous fear that's kind of just ugh, all encompassing. Make sure that you get with a therapist if it's starting to manifest in a way that they need to help you with. Okay, don't be afraid of doing that. But you can go in and say, okay, I clear this extraneous fear in all directions of time and space in all of my timelines. All vibrating all at the same time. Now, you could think of this as dimension hopping. Uh, you can think of this as, um, you know, uh, other frequencies. However it works for you, doesn't really matter. <laughs> but that will help uh, ease it up and ease that flow, okay? But remember, you're still, we're all kind of, at least how it's coming through me, I have to say that, uh, we're all kind of vibrating and learning something different in various expressions. 
So, you know, all, uh, across all time and space for the highest good of everyone involved. I think that covers all the bases, okay? Now, if you go into a clearing meditation, whatever your intention is, whether it is, uh, you know, karma release or I just want to release negativity or I want to release the fear, whatever it is, I first and foremost, I said this before, I'll say it again, I would highly recommend that you invite an archangel to come on in and help you, okay, or your spiritual team, whatever you want to do, um, and set the intention, come from a pure place, and then let whatever's going to happen, happen. Some people see a tornado, and it's like it's sucking all of the negativity away from them. Um, I, especially if I have karma or um, some resentment, clearing resentment, that's a big one, um, with a person or a group of people, I might go into meditation and see them coming towards me and the persona becomes like dust and it flows away and it just leaves the light being, the higher self. And then I can go and communicate with that person in their light frequency. Okay. Now, it, interestingly enough, I have done clearings where someone comes forward and the persona blows away and their light is like this big but I still embrace whatever light is there and let it be. This can be very telling. If you have some people in your life, you're like, I don't know if I can trust them or not. They seem really duplicitous. You know, it seems like I feel like there's like this, cause again, if you're an empath and you're watching this, you know, you feel people's wounded inner child. So, and you usually see the best in people, right? So you might sense that this person has just really been through a lot. If you do this kind of uh, exercise and you see them come forward and the persona blows away and you see what light is left. This can be very telling and you feel it out throughout your whole body. Make sure you're not just contriving it in your mind, but just you're in a relaxed space. Ideally, the ego would be asleep, <laughs> right? But you're, the rest of your messaging is happening. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. Okay, again, if you're in a deep meditation and this is happening, pay attention to what's happening. Pay attention to those who, when, when their persona is swept away, they only have a tiny bit of light left. And conversely, who you thought might have been a major enemy of yours, maybe they're full of light and you see all their fears, right, flowing away. This is very effective and it can give you some good perspective uh, and, and to gauge your own light as well. You could do this as an exercise. Let's say you don't have any hard feelings against anybody. You're just one of those perfect people. Awesome. Okay. So you're doing... A clearing on yourself you're letting your persona flow away you're just standing here in your light you can imagine a mirror or if that doesn't work for you you can imagine that you're a piece of you is coming outside to observe where your light is now you might see dark spots you might see holes <laughs> in the light and before you try to just go oh i don't like that and put judgment on it and throw some light at it ask yourself what is that from the answer will come and it will be very clear it's from that thing that happened in childhood. Can I allow this to heal? You know, and you could do like a self-healing, again, with angels. You can ask Archangel Raphael to come in. You can ask uh, Archangel Shamuel to come in to help you be filled with light and to, you know, reach your fullest potential in your human form. But not without first asking, what's that doing there? Don't miss the opportunity to learn about yourself and to integrate and seal up <laughs> some of these, you know, or, or even they're showing me even where the light can be thin. It's not gone, but it's thin. It kind of, it kind of blares out a little bit and thins out. So you can look at that and go, why do I not have, you know, like a, a nice boundary there? And for some of you who are watching this, I'll just give you a message. It has to do with your mind. There's like a fuzzy light around your mind. And filling that in, you know, looking at that, you might realize that, you know what, I let people convince me of things that aren't true. Or I let my ego run away with me. Or, you know, I'm very susceptible to people who want to take advantage of me and they do it through mind manipulation, this sort of thing. Or I get very sucked in by news stories or what have you. The narrative that's out in the world, it gets to me. Right? So even there, even if you find that you uh, get too wrapped up in surface level things as a human and you do this exercise to look at where your light is, if you see that fuzziness 
right? Especially the light gets fuzzy around where your, your head space would be. Once you understand, seal it off with light. If the fuzziness is around the heart, what are you still hurting about? What do you believe about love? And you can get your messaging and seal that light off. Around the stomach area, especially the solar plexus area, if that is sort of fuzzed out or blared out or whatever, because it could be blared out and like be really piercing, you'd be like, yeah, I got good self-esteem. Nah, uh, it might be over the top self-esteem, okay? <laughs> you want to get it into a healthy, uh, you know, a healthy space and just make sure that it's all filled in, yes? Or if it, if it is fuzzy, then, you know, where is your confidence lacking? And why is that? Okay. Money, money will be the root chakra. The root chakra might look fuzzy. If you're trying to heal anything around sexuality, creativity, maybe you are dealing with fertility issues, you might see that your sacral chakra is a little blared out. You know, and we can go on and on. We didn't talk about the throat, the, the, the third eye, the indigo aspect, and the crown. Any of those can start to feel fuzzy and then you don't feel whole and complete within yourself. Now what happens? Well, we see that, you know, people try to lean on their job and their status to help them feel whole and complete. Are they going to lean on a person and say, you're responsible for my happiness. Love me to feel whole and complete. This could also be health issues as well. Check with a doctor, of course, if that is occurring. But this is just a great gauge. You know, ask the archangels to come on in, even if you want your guardian angel to come in and help you with this activity, to just see where your light is. Where do you want to fill in a little bit after you learn what it's from? All right. And once you do this, you come on back into your form. Things are probably going to be exactly where they were before, <laughs> but your perception of them will be different. How you feel about it will be different. And therefore, how you handle it will change. And there could be more of a free flow. And of course, this is always accessible to you, uh, if, especially if you're a spiritual practitioner, you know to do this once a day at least, right? <laughs> at least. But this can help you have more flow and openness in your life. And you're not getting stuck and hung up on a story, especially even maybe a story that's not even meant for this timeline. All right. So we're going to leave it there. Leave your questions down below. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.